Hi, this is Michelle Alvarez, and I'm going to show you how I've created my Wix sites that are interactive websites that I've used to support my curriculum in my language arts and gifted classrooms in middle school. Um, I like Wix because they have some flash capabilities on their flash templates that are really nice and add some extra pop to the websites that the HTML versions don't offer. Um, and I know there's currently, at the, this date of this recording, some issues with Flash um, and the f what the future of it's going to be, but I still like it the best, so I'm going to hope for the best and continue with what I've been doing. Um, so you click, I'm going to click on Create a New Site. Um, it automatically comes up here to the different types of templates. If you click on blank templates, it takes you to the HTML versions. So you, to find the flash, they've kind of hidden them now for some reason. You scroll all the way to the bottom, over here on the bottom right-hand corner, it says flash templates. And it gives you basically the same options, except you have flash. So I'm going to choose start from scratch, because that gives you a totally blank canvas to work from. And it's free. So I'm going to click edit. I'm using Chrome browser, by the way. It does take a lot of patience to work with Wix sometimes. Okay, there we go. It kind of gives you a tutorial, a demo, if you want it. Um, I'm kind of going to be that for you, so I'm going to go ahead and X this out. So you notice over here is the page manager. Um, you can minimize it whenever you need to or open it up. Um, uh, click over here on the home page. And you can kind of see it's a basically a very blank template. You've got the outline here of the space for in its title here, home page, one of one. Um, until I add a page, it'll, um, it's only going to be one. So the first thing I do is I've got to start with my background. So I go to add, and what I've done Prior to starting the website, I've already gone on and looked for some free open source images that I can use for my backgrounds. And that's really the only part that I look at, um, look for as far as adding visuals. Because you'll see as we go through this, there's so many built-ins that I use. Um, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to add a picture. And um, I already have quite a few things that I've used over here in the images you can actually create folders um, so if you've got more than one website like I do um, I've got them sorted into the, each of the different websites so now I'm gonna add a folder and I'm gonna call this flip side part 2 And all the images and things that I end up uploading for that would be a lot easier to find because if you notice under all I have 158 images that I've uploaded. So to keep them easier access um, and quicker access I've got them sorted in here into the folders. So I'm going to upload an image that I found and saved to my desktop. The antique storefront. Alright, so here's a storefront image that I found. And on my blog, I'm going to have some um, resources where you can find some really good images. Now, you probably can't see this because it's a white background right now, but there's actually a, a frame that defaults around all the pictures. I don't want the frame. So I go over here, and as you can see, I'm working with the photo. That's what's highlighted. So I'm going to go down here to Frames and click on Frames and select no frame. So it automatically changes it. Then I'm going to drag this and I, I choose the largest I can find um, of images. So if they are um, at least a thousand by a thousand pixels, they're going to be really nice 3D HD images. Now um, settings on here I'm going to change because if you noticed it kind of 
didn't do what I wanted it to do. It kind of expanded a little more than I wanted it to, although it seems to be changing a little bit better now. Sometimes though, you've got to go under settings and this says auto crop. A lot of times stretch works better depending on how much of the image you need to see for whatever purpose you need it there. Um, so sometimes this works there. Now as I drag the image down, you'll see there's still an outline here. This outline black, thin black box, that's the actual space that's going to be visible on the website. So whatever I've got below here is going to be cut off. So then that could be a problem. So it depends on how, what part of the image you want to show on the actual website. Now I can't see the side adjustments. So I gotta make this a little smaller. And make it, I actually pull it out just a little farther than the edges so that it's covered pretty good. So I scroll up. And here at the top one is where you're gonna move the pages up to the top of that line. And I move the page itself up to the top of the line. So you adjust this till you get it the way you want it. You may want the home page embedded. Again, it's going to get a little, the, the more pages you have embedded on top of each other that you'll see you can do um, the trickier it kind of gets. All right, so I'm going to leave it there and see what happens. Um, so this is going to be my new area that I'm going to open up from the city map on my original Flipside website it will be linked to this. Every page that you create has its own web address. So I'll just be copying and pasting it and linking it and I'll show you that in a future screencast. Alright, so this is my main site. Now, um, my language arts curriculum, we're starting a new unit. And the unit that we're starting is going to be centered around the young adult novel, The Egypt Game. And um, in case you don't know much about the Egypt Game storyline, it takes place in and around this antique shop. So that's where I come up with this as my background. So they're going to actually go into one of these shops. So I'm going to choose to add clip art. And this is where you've got the animations that the flash option has that the HTML doesn't. So you've got so many options. Here's just animations in general. There's 122 pages and you can search by type. Video effects are what I use a lot of. They're just that. They're just like flashes and sparkly things. And um, from the basis of my background of the storyline for this whole website, where they've been transported into this world of flip side and they have to follow the blue flashing light, um, I'm going to find the flashing light that I use on a regular basis is this blue bling and so it flashes I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and I'll put it here on this green or I'm gonna make this the shop all right so then when they get there they'll go into that shop so this is the first page now in order for them to get in the shop I have to create a new page So I'm going to go over here on home page and over here you see a little drop down arrow and I'm going to click on add a page. And you choose, they've got some templates but I constantly stay with the blank. So that, again it gives you a blank canvas to work on. I'm going to name this page inside. Yeah, if I can spell. antique shop okay so this is a, another blank page so again inside what's the inside of the antique shop going to look like add a page a picture again and again I've saved I found these ahead of time now I'm going to choose Antique shop. I think that's the ones. Next to 
junkyards out back. Antique store, open. Nope, that's a front one. If I would have named them a little bit easier, it would make it a lot easier to deal with. Let's, let me, I'm going to add all these at one time. If I held the shift key down and then click the top one so it highlighted them all, you can actually upload multiple pictures at one time. So here are all the ones. Here is the inside. There were some other options I was looking at for the outside of the antique shop. And if they're here, I can go ahead and change them later if I want to. So this is the inside of the antique shop. Again, I've got a frame that I need to change to no frame. It's checked, but it's not actually take. It says basically it's telling you that's the last thing you asked for. Do you want to ask, do the same thing you did again? Um, but you do have to click on it a second time to activate it. And again, drag the picture. Now some of them, if they're not big enough, they're not going to be clear enough. And that's the problem that I'm having here. Let me see if I change settings. Instead of auto crop to stretch. Nope. So this picture is not going to be big enough for the inside of my shop. So I'm going to have to delete it. I just click the delete key. Let me add. And again, you've got space to add. Um, several gigabytes of of media that you add yourself, whether it's audio, video, or images. So I'm going to upload all these other images that I did the other day, including the junkyard, which will be another window when they go out back. I'm upload all these and see which one is the one that I was thinking about. Again, the higher quality resolution, the better you'll have for the inside. Okay, this one, image one. Double click. Do back to frames, no frame. So if you're familiar with, you know, dragging and dropping and inserting and those kind of things, the more um, computer savvy you are, the, the less of a problem this might become for you. Now it's still pretty fuzzy, and I like my pictures to be as clear as possible. See if the setting change will help. Manual crop, oops, that's what I was on before. Go back to stretch. Eh, it's a little better. But again, I've got this black outline down here. I need to fill the whole space. I'll probably go in and change this picture later and see if I can find another um, clearer image of it in the inside of a, an antique shop. But just for the purpose of the screencast, I'll, I'll kind of continue and show you what I've done. I click back here on the home page where I started, and you can see the little blue flashing. I'm going to click on it again this time, now that I have another page that's going to get linked to, and this time I'm going to click link. So you notice here you can link it to a page that you've already created on any of your on the website. You can link it to an email um, or a URL. And later on I'll be using the URL when I link it back to my original Flipside site. But for the purpose of this, part two, I'm going to use an existing page that's part of this website, which is inside the antique shop. So I'll click OK and it's there. I'm going to click OK again. So now when I publish the site, this when they click on this little flashing blue light, it'll make the um, antique shop appear inside. So they will get in the door of the antique shop. So basically what I do in these sites is I'll find online resources, uh, links to Google Docs, whatever resources that I'm using for my classes that's what I, I link them in here very similarly. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit and then I will show you the next step in the next screencast. But this is basically how it gets started.